The next ones are going to do value mixture problems where one of your equations usually is going to be the sum of two things and the other one's going to combine it with a rate or something that we have to multiply by our things. So if I read the problem, it says two rainstorms occur in one week in a certain area. The first storm, 40 milliliters of rain fell per hour and in the second storm, 25 milliliters of rain fell per hour. So if I was trying to figure out how much rain fell, I would have to take the 40 times the number of hours of the first storm, that would give me that total rainfall, and I take the 25 times the number of hours of the second storm to find out how much rain fell on that day. The rain lasted for a total of 55 hours, resulting in a total rainfall of 1,825 milliliters. How long was each storm? So again, I'm going to use F for my first storm and S for my second storm. And I am going to keep in mind that the question asks, how long was each of my storms? Well, if I look in my word problem, it says the rain lasted for a total of 55 hours. So if I take the length of the first storm plus the length of the second storm, that should be my total 55 hours. The second equation is going to be from that number of milliliters that fell per hour. If I take 40 times the length of the first storm, I'm going to get the total number of milliliters for that storm. Plus 25 times the length of the second storm gives me the number of milliliters. And so the total rainfall, 1,825 milliliters. Now again, when you look at this on Alex, they're not going to work it out for you because you could solve it by substitution or you could solve it by the elimination method. So the first one here I'm going to solve by substitution so you have an example of that. The second one I'll solve by the elimination method. I prefer the elimination method but everybody's different so I'm going to give you a couple different options of how you could do this. And so if I'm solving by substitution, I would have to solve one of my equations either for the F or the S. It doesn't really matter which one. I'm going to solve it for the F. F is going to be equal to 55 minus S then. So then what I'm going to do is replace the F down here with the 55 minus S. So my new equation would be 40 times 55 minus S plus 25S equals 1825. I've replaced the F in terms of the second storm, so now I only have one variable in my equation, and I have to go ahead and solve that. So if I use my distributive property, I have to start off with 40 times 55. So 2,200. And then 40 times minus S, so minus 40S. Use my distributive property there. Plus 25S equals 1825. Combining my like terms here, I have a negative 40 plus 25. So I'm going to have a negative 15S. So 2200 minus 15S equals 1825. I'm then going to move my 2200 to the other side, so I'm going to subtract that. And so if I take 1825 minus 2200, I get negative 375. And then of course I have to divide by my coefficient, so I'm going to divide by that negative 15. And of course, the negative divided by a negative makes that a positive. S is going to equal 25. So the second storm lasted for 25 hours. Now to find the length of the first storm, since we went ahead and rearranged this one, we can just go ahead and substitute our 25 in here. F is going to equal 55 minus 25, so F is going to equal 30. So the first storm lasted 30 hours, the second storm lasted 25 hours. Notice if you check that using this equation, if you take 40 times the 30 hours, 40 milliliters for 30 hours, 
plus 25 times 25, 25 milliliters per hour for 25 hours, if I happen to multiply that out. 40 times 30 is 1,200 milliliters for the first storm, 25 times 25 is 625 for the second storm, and if I add those together, 1825 is the total number of milliliters for both storms. Yep, checks out. Not that you have to check it, but sometimes when you're on an assessment and you're really not sure, did I do it right? That's what you can do again when you solve with the system of equations. It's just plug them back into this other equation and check. Does it work? Yes, it does. So this one we did by the substitution method. The next one we're going to set up and do by the elimination method. And so I'm going to slide down here to number 11. It says two mechanics worked on a car. The first mechanic worked for 20 hours. The second mechanic worked for 15 hours. Together they charge a total of $3,950. What was the rate charged per hour by each mechanic if the sum of the two rates was $225 per hour? So again, we have a first and a second one, and we're looking for each of their rates. What is the rate of the first mechanic? What is the rate of the second mechanic? Again, we always want to look for that one equation where you're going to add the two things together. This last sentence here said the sum of my two rates, the first guy plus the second guy, was $225 an hour. So that was easy enough to pick out. The other one comes from what they were, how long they worked. If I take 20 hours times the rate charged per hour, I'm going to get how much money the first guy charged. The second one worked for 15 hours, so if I take 15 times his rate, I'm going to get how much he charged. Together they charge $3,950. So again, we have our system of equation. We could solve it by the substitution method, but we're going to go ahead and solve this one by the elimination method. So for the elimination method, we want to make opposites in front of either the F or the S's. I'm just going to use the F. Since there's a positive 20 in front of that equation, I'm going to take my first equation and multiply everything in that equation by negative 20. So I'm going to have negative 20F minus 20S equals, and then I've got to take that negative 20 times my 225. So I'm going to get negative 4,500. Now I'm going to go ahead and add these two equations together. My 20 and my negative 20 are opposites. They're going to cancel each other out. So 20 minus 20 gives us no f's. 15 minus 20 is negative 5s. And then I've got to take 3950 minus 4500. And I get negative 550. I'm then going to divide by my negative 5. A negative divided by a negative gives me a positive, and I get 110. I didn't leave myself much room for writing in my answer, but the second mechanic is charging $110 an hour. Now that's how much the business is probably taking in, probably not how much he has to gets to take home. So again, since we solve this by the elimination method, we want to plug the 110 into one of our two equations. And of course, the top one here looks like it'd be way easier to use than the bottom one. So I'm going to use the one that says F plus S equals 225. I know that S is 110, so F plus 110 equals 225. And then it's pretty easy to solve because all I have to do is subtract my 110 to move it to the other side. And so the first one charged $115 an hour. So the first one's charging $115 an hour, the second one is charging $110 an hour. So it's up to you whether you like the substitution method or the elimination method better. I like the elimination method, so the number 12 here, I'm going to do by the elimination method again. If you like the substitution method, certainly go ahead and use it. If you want me to go over something with you again, doing the, the uh, substitution method, just let me know. 
I'm going to go ahead then. It says a family has two cars. The first car has a fuel efficiency of 35 miles a gallon of gas. The second one has a fuel efficiency of 30 miles per gallon of gas. During one particular week, the two cars went a combined total of 2,425 miles for a total gas consumption of 75 gallons. How many gallons were consumed by each of the two cars that week? So I have my first one and my second one, and I'm looking for how many gallons, right? So if I look there, it says the total gas consumption of 75 gallons. That's my how many gallons for both of my cars. So my first one plus my second one was 75 gallons of gas. It said the first car had a fuel efficiency of 35 miles per gallon. If I take 35 times the number of gallons, that's going to tell me how many miles I drove that car, right? If I have 35 miles a gallon and I use 2 gallons of gas, I went 70 miles. So, 35 times the number of gallons of the first. The second one gets 30 miles a gallon. So, 30 times the number of gallons for the second gives me the total mileage 2,425 miles. So, again, on this one, we're going to go ahead and solve by the elimination method. Now I could get rid of either the F or the S. Since the S looks a little easier, it's a 30 instead of a 35, I'm going to multiply by the negative 30, and that way I can cancel out my S's. If you want to multiply by negative 35, it's going to work. Same kind of thing. Just for me, it's a little probably easier to multiply by the 30. So I'm going to have negative 30F minus 30S using my distributive property and then I have to take my negative 30 times 75. 2,250 negative. So in this case, 35 minus 30 would give me 5F. Those two are going to cancel out. I have to take 2425 minus 2250. So I get 175. And then of course to solve that, I'm going to go ahead and just divide by 5. So I get 35 for my answer. So the first car used 35 gallons of gas. My second one, I've got to use, or I'm going to use the first equation. So I'm going to say the first one plus the second one was 75. I knew the first one was 35. So in order to solve that, I'm going to go ahead and subtract my 35. And so my second one used 40 gallons of gas.